In lesson 5.4, you will factor and solve polynomial equations. Here's three examples. We want to factor the polynomial completely. The first trinomial has a greatest common factor, and we always want to look for that GCF. It has a greatest common factor of y. So we'll factor that out first, leaving y squared minus 4y minus 12. Remember, you can always check by distributing. y times y squared is y cubed, and y times negative 4y is negative 4y squared. y times negative 12 is negative 12y. So it's factored uh, correctly, but that trinomial that's left should factor into a binomial times a binomial. Factors of y squared go first. y times y is y squared. Factors of 12 that have a difference of 4 are 6 and 2. And we'll make the 6 negative and the two positives so that negative 6y and positive 2y are negative 4y in the middle, and negative 6 times positive 2 is negative 12. So that trinomial is completely factored now. And in the second example, there's a greatest common factor of 3x, so factor that out first, leaving x squared plus 10x plus 25. And that trinomial that's left, we need to see if it'll factor into a binomial times a binomial. Factors of x squared go first. x times x is x squared. Then I need factors of 25 that add to give me 10. Well, that's going to be 5 times 5 and make them both positive. So that positive 5x in the middle plus positive 5x on the outside is the sum of 10x in the middle of my trinomial, and positive 5 times positive 5 is positive 25. So it's completely factored, but because those two binomials are the same, I could write this as 3x times the quantity x plus 5 squared. So what we factored was a perfect square trinomial that factored into a binomial times itself. So the trinomial that we started with is now completely factored. In our third example, we only have two terms, but there is a greatest common factor of 5g cubed. So we want to factor that out first. We'll get g squared minus 16 as a result. And that what we have left is the difference of two perfect squares. So we need to factor that difference of two perfect squares into a binomial times a binomial. The sum and difference of the square roots of those two terms. So the square root of g squared is just g. g times g is g squared. And the square root of 16 is 4. Positive 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. And remember, the inner product and outer product sum to 0. So we have no middle term. 4g plus negative 4g is 0. OK, here we're factoring the sum and difference of two cubes. The sum and difference of two cubes both factor, but remember only the difference of two squares factors. The sum of two squares is not factorable. So let's start by factoring the sum of two perfect cubes in example one here into a binomial times a trinomial. We want to take the cube root of the first term, which is x, because x times x times x is x cubed, and the cube root of the second term, which is 4, because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Now to get the trinomial, we want to square the first term in our binomial, multiply it to itself. To get the middle term in the trinomial, we multiply the two terms in the binomial together and get 4x. We need to change a sign, so it's negative 4x in the middle. And then to get the third term, we square the second term in the binomial or multiply it to itself. So positive 4 times positive 4 is positive 16. Now this trinomial, even though it's of the second degree, never factors further. So that sum of two perfect cubes is completely factored. In the second example, we're factoring the sum of two perfect cubes again, and that'll factor into the binomial times a trinomial. So we'll go through those same steps. Take the cube root of the first term, that's 3y, and the cube root of the second term, that's 5. And now to get the trinomial, we square 3y, or multiply it to itself and get 9y squared. To get the middle term in our trinomial, we multiply these two terms in the binomial together and get 15y. 
Remember to change the sign so that we put negative 15y in the center here. And the third term we'll get by squaring 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So that sum of two perfect cubes is completely factored. In the third example, there's a greatest common factor of negative 2d squared. So we'll factor out the greatest common factor first, leaving d cubed minus 125d. Oh, no d, 125. Let's check by distributing. Negative 2d squared times d cubed is negative 2d to the fifth. Negative 2d squared times negative 125 is positive 250d squared. So it's factored correctly, but what's left is the difference of two perfect cubes. So we'll factor that difference of two perfect cubes into a binomial times a trinomial. And we'll go through those same steps. We'll take the cubit of d cubed, which is d, and the cubit of negative 125, which is negative 5. And now to get the trinomial, we'll square the first term in our binomial, multiply it to itself, to get the middle term, we'll multiply the two terms in the binomial together and get negative 5d, but we'll change the sign so that we have positive 5d in the middle. And then to get the third term, we're going to square negative 5 or multiply it to itself. So we get positive 25. And now that uh, binomial is completely factored. Okay, here we're factoring a polynomial in four terms. We need to start with our polynomial in four terms in standard form. Look for a greatest common factor, but when there is none, we want to use a, a method called grouping. We're going to group or break these uh, two terms into two groups and take out the greatest common factor in the first two terms. The greatest common factor is x squared, and it's going to leave x plus 3. Just check, x squared times x is x cubed, and x squared times 3 is 3x squared. Now I'll do the same in the second two terms and take out a greatest common factor of 10 so that I'm left with x plus 3 again. 10 times x is 10x and 10 times 3 is 30. So it's factored correctly. The only way grouping is going to work if these, is if these binomials that I'm left with are the same. And they are x plus 3. So now I can factor x plus 3 out of the two terms that I created so that I'm left with the binomial x squared plus 10. Now x squared plus 10, even though it's of the second degree, is not factorable further. So I'm done factoring that polynomial in four terms. Okay, looking at the next example, it's in standard form and there's no greatest common factor. So I'll group and I'll take out the greatest common factor of 9t squared in the first two terms. That's going to leave 3t plus 5. Okay, I'll take out a greatest common factor of negative 1 in the next two terms so that I'm left with 3t plus 5. I'll check that one. Negative 1 times 3t is negative 3t, and negative 1 times positive 5 is negative 5. So it's factored correctly, and those binomials are exactly the same, so I can factor out 3t plus 5, leaving the binomial 9t squared minus 1. which is the difference of two perfect squares. So that difference is going to factor further. It'll factor into a binomial times a binomial. The sum and difference are the square roots of those two terms. So the square root of 9t squared is 3t. 3t times 3t is 9t squared. And the square root of 1 is 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And remember that inner product, 3t, plus negative 3t is 0. So that polynomial in four terms is completely factored into three linear factors. Now we're going to use our factoring techniques and the zero product property to solve these polynomial equations. We want to be sure they're in standard form with 0 on one side. And in this one, I can factor out a greatest common factor of x squared. and then use the zero product property, set x squared equal to zero, or x minus three equal to zero. Now when I solve the first equation for x, I would take the square root of both sides to get just x. I would get two solutions, plus or minus the square root of zero, 
but since the square root of 0 is 0, and 0 is neither positive or negative, I'm just getting one solution, 0. And in the second equation, I need to add 3 to both sides to get x alone, so I find out x is equal to 3. My two solutions are 0 and 3. In the second example, there's a greatest common factor of 2, so I'll factor that out first, leaving x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 36. And now that trinomial should factor into a binomial times a binomial. So I'll go ahead and factor. x to the fourth factors into x squared times x squared. Factors of 36 that add to give me 13 are 4 and 9. I'll make them both negative. So that negative 4x squared and negative 9x squared sum to negative 13x squared in the middle, and negative 4 times negative 9 is positive 36. The two binomials that I get are both the difference of two perfect squares, so they're going to factor further, and I want to be sure to factor completely and then use the zero product property. So I'm going to factor both of those difference of two perfect squares into the sum and difference of the square roots of those two terms. So I'm going to get x times x is x squared, and positive 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Then in the second binomial, I'm going to get x times x is x squared, and positive 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So now that equation, that polynomial, is factored completely, and I can use the zero product property. Setting 2 equal to 0 just gives me a false statement, so all I need to set equal to 0 are these binomials. x plus 2 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0. And solving for x, you can see that our solutions are going to be negative 2, positive 2, negative 3, and positive 3. Four solutions to that quartic equation. Okay, in this third example, we need our equation in standard form, so I'm going to move all of my terms to the left, getting 0 on the right. Okay, then I see there's a greatest common factor of 3x, so I'll factor that out, leaving x cubed plus x squared minus 2x minus 2 equals 0. Okay, and then I'll factor that polynomial in four terms. I'll try grouping. So I'll factor x squared out of the first two terms, leaving x plus 1. And I'll factor negative 2 out of the second two terms, leaving x plus 1. And now because those binomials are the same, x plus 1, I can factor them out, factoring x plus out 1, x plus 1 out is going to leave the binomial x squared minus 2. Now that's not the difference of two perfect squares, so it's not going to factor further. I'm ready to use the zero product property, so I'll set 3x equal to 0, or x plus 1 equal to 0, or x squared minus 2 equal to 0. Okay, in this first one, dividing both sides by 3, I'm going to find out x is equal to 0. In the second equation, subtracting 1 from both sides, I get x equals negative 1. And in the third equation, I find out x squared is equal to 2, and taking the square root of both sides is going to give me x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. So I have four solutions, 0, negative 1, negative the square root of 2, and positive the square root of 2. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 10 found on pages 354 and 355 of your textbook.